as we come and open his word. Father God, I thank you that you are leading, that you are calling, that you are drawing. And just over these next few moments, Father God, I thank you that we can hear from you. Inspire us, inform us, call us and draw us. To yourself we pray. Thank you that you hear our praise and you hear our prayers. You wipe our tears and you celebrate with us in all that we do and say. Thank you, God, that we will hear your call. Hello, God. I hear your voice. I feel your touch. I know you're leading and drawing and calling. In Jesus' name, amen. So welcome, if you're here with us online or if you're here with us in person, we're finishing a little series I just called Hello God Calling. He's ringing that phone, he's pressing that bell, he's knocking on that door, he's calling to you and to me. Hello, God is calling you, God is drawing you. Speaking to you, speaking to me, challenging us, prompting us, leading us, guiding us. Never sacrifice your calling on the altar of comfort. Never. If you're aware of the disciples, if you're aware of the ministry of Jesus... They were a mixed bunch of people. Fishermen. People from different walks of life. One guy was a tax collector. And he heard the call. He would have had an interesting life. He would have been doing well financially. He would have known the right people and moved in the right circles. Matthew would have been liked by some and hated by others. And so we open our Bible to Matthew 9, 9 to 13. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. It's quite amazing, isn't it? One word, one call. Jesus is intersecting in his life, intersecting his world, intersecting his day and his job. And he does that for us as well. He comes and intersects in our life and our day and our job. And turn things around. He turns them upside down. He says, hello. Come follow me. No hesitation. No, just a minute. No, I need to. Oh, sorry, I better check the diary and see if I'm free to follow you. A few simple words. He hears the call and follows. No hesitation. Reading on there in Matthew. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. Any of them here today? Yes. Amen. Saved by grace. But when the Pharisees saw this, of course, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with such scum and low life and terrible people? When Jesus heard this, he said, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Then he added, Now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. 
I want you to do something. Do an action that shows who you follow and who you care about. Anyone can just give a sacrifice. But I want you to show mercy. What is in your heart? Show the outworking of that in some way. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, Jesus said, but those who know they are sinners. For a short time after healing the paralytic, Jesus remains in the area of Capernaum and the Sea of Galilee. Galilee. Crowds come to him and follow him and want to hear his teaching. And so we find Jesus walking along and he sees Matthew sitting at his tax office and extends a wonderful and powerful invitation to him, be my follower. Hello, God is calling. God is drawing. God is calling his name. And I pray he's called your name too. It's very likely Matthew is already somewhat familiar with Jesus and his teaching and and the works he performed in the area, as were Peter and Andrew, James and John. Like then, Matthew responds immediately. He leaves his responsibilities as a tax collector behind and becomes a disciple of Jesus, a follower of him. Just imagine, hey, hey, mate, um, excuse me, what, what are you doing? I'm following Jesus. I'm sure we've all shocked people at times through the journey of life. Hey, I'm a Christian now. Really? Big, wide eyes, open mouths. I'm a follower of Jesus. When Jesus comes calling, we don't all have to stop what we are doing. For some, yes. For others, no. But I encourage you to stay where God has placed you and planted you. Matthew has a dinner party. He didn't abandon his workmates. He didn't abandon his friends, but brought his new friends with him and brought Jesus with him as well. You know, he's continued to mix in the circle that he was a part of with those sinners, you know. He did not make an excuse for his changed life or having Jesus there. They would have known who he was. It was just how it was. Hey, I'm having a party. Come along, enjoy dinner together. Don't think your life cannot be a powerful witness. He may call you to where you are today, but we need to let him cross that road and find us and respond. Are you willing to listen? Are you willing to be found by Jesus today? This morning, in this moment, in these few minutes together, let Jesus find you and call you and draw you to himself. Experience the presence of God, the goodness of God, the grace of God upon us this morning. In Luke 7, from verse 11 we read, Soon after Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearers stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear 
swept the crowd. And they praised God saying, a mighty prophet has risen among us today. And God has visited his people today. And the news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country side. Jesus will cross whatever barrier you feel has separated you. Life, circumstances, situation. Know this with all assurance. Our God crosses lines to show us his love. To show us his care. To call us and draw us. He disrupts the funeral procession. There's crying, there's wailing, there's sad, distraught people. There is a mother who's, who's lost her son. Just one touch. Just one touch. The Lord saw her. He cared. And he goes and he touches this boy's lifeless body. Just one touch. One touch. That's all you need from Jesus. It's almost impossible to describe what what this grieving widow and mother's life would have been like. Not only did she have no husband, now she had no son. Because moments before, she had nothing. Not only did she lose those she loved, she couldn't even support herself in that day and age and in that culture and in that situation. If you didn't have a husband or if you didn't have a son or someone to support you, there would be no means of survival. Ladies, you had two choices. You could be a beggar or a prostitute. Not good options. Depending on other people for the rest of your life. Living a life of guilt and shame. Her future was indeed very bleak. And so we have this distraught procession. And Jesus comes and steps into the situation. He touches the boy's dead, lifeless body. He comes back to life. They're carrying him to the grave. His day is done. He's in the coffin. And he comes back to life. Then Jesus gives the boy back to his mother. This single mum, this widow. She gets her life back. Her sadness and despair is turned into joy and amazement. He gives her hope back, purpose back, just one touch, just one touch, one word, and her hope is restored. Let Jesus move into your situation. Get some hope back. Hear his call. Let him bring hope and peace. Restore your mind. Restore your emotions. Restore your anxiety, doubt, sadness and loss. Luke 7, 13 and 14. Up there for you. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry. He said, that was his first call. Don't cry. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it and the bearers stopped. And he said, young man, young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Friends, that young man heard that call that day. What on earth is going on? 
I was dead and now I'm alive. Get up. Get up. Your life is restored. He heard the voice of Jesus. I pray you've heard the voice of Jesus. Come follow me. Get up. Open that door. Take a step. We don't draw lines to keep people out. We cross lines to bring people in. Up on the screen there as I finish this morning. You don't always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. Surrender to the call of God upon your life. Hear his call. Read his word. Take a step. Believe in faith that he will have a better outcome. That he can change a situation. That he can turn things around in a moment. It might be a bit dark in the middle. But there's joy on the other side. Hello. God is calling you. God bless you. Amen. Let's see.